James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Today is November 29th, 2023, 5 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, NOAA and NASA have jumped on board. They're admitting that we're facing a cannibal CME, perhaps up to a level G3 geomagnetic storm, that would be December 1st inbound. We actually have at least four CMEs inbound that we know about. And they go over them right here. CME number one early on the 27th. A filament eruption from the southwest passing mostly south and ahead of Earth. CME number two late on the 27th. November erupting to the southeast associated with a flaring near N20E15. And I don't know what that is. CME number three, late on the 27th. A partial halo CME associated with a flare from AR3503 and a subsequent filament eruption merging with coronal mass ejection number two. CME number four, an M9.8 flare from AR3500 on the 28th of November yesterday associated with a full halo coronal mass ejection merging with coronal mass ejections 2 and 3 and arriving on the 1st of December. G3 geomagnetic storm likely on December 1st with a full halo CME inbound. With three coronal mass ejections already inbound, the addition of a fourth full halo coronal mass ejection has prompted the Space Weather Prediction Center forecasters to upgrade the G2 watch on the 1st of December to a G3 watch. This faster moving halo CME is progged to merge with two and three upstream CMEs, all arriving on Earth on December 1st, 2023. G3 or very strong conditions are now likely on December 1st. We will continue to monitor this space weather and update you with details. Now, let's take an actual look at all of these coronal mass ejections. It's Ugly, folks. All right, we're going to start with an event late on the 26th and go right into the 27th and the 28th to look at the four large coronal mass ejections. We're a little flickering here. There goes a rock. Now we're on the 27th. There's a filament eruption there, bottom lower hand. Uh, that supposedly was a partial halo CME, uh, followed by another filament eruption, it looks like. And then today's whammy right there, or should I say yesterday's whammy right there. We'll take one more look at that, but that's what we have headed this way, folks, headed this way. A little flickering on the 26th. Then we go into the filament eruption down here. Followed. Let's wait for our filament eruption on the 27th. Followed by another solar flare, partial halo. And then a filament eruption. Looked like two to me. The other thing that needs to be pointed out are all of the rocks moving across here. Uh, you can see here. Looks like we're in a debris field. All these up here. We've got uh, one coming right here directly into the sun. You can see a group of one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll cap this off with the M9.82 solar flare full halo eruption yesterday. Which we're right about to see. Here we go. Bang, baby. Bang. Get ready. That last coronal mass ejection 
is going to be moving much quicker. It was much stronger and larger. And it will be catching at least two of the other frontal mass ejections. Uh, both of those are supposed to hit Earth. The first one they said might pass south of our planet. Please share, please subscribe, and always remember, folks, that anything's possible in Bizarro World. God bless you all.